What's going on, people? A another video. Nice day out here in the park. Talking a little bit of boxing. Uh, I want to speak about Muhammad Ali and Muhammad Ali's greatness and why Ali is so revered by so many people and why he's regarded so highly in the boxing world. Muhammad Ali is very known for a lot of stuff he did outside of boxing, but this video we're just going to talk about what he did in boxing. Muhammad Ali was the Olympic gold medalist in 1960, 18 years old. He turns pro after the Olympics, and he gets right into it, starts fighting big-time contenders. As early as 1962, he gets dropped by Sonny Banks, gets up, wins that fight, fights Doug Jones, who was ranked in the top 10 at the time, beats him. Then he fights Henry Cooper in England. And he gets knocked down unexpectedly, again for the second time in his career, again with the left hook. And he comes back and wins the fight. He then fights Sonny Liston for the title. Now at this time, at this point in time, Sonny Liston was one of the most vicious champions ever. He had knocked out Floyd Patterson multiple times, Cleveland Williams. He was very, very feared in the boxing world. And he was an eight to one favorite over Muhammad Ali. And Muhammad Ali predicted that he would beat Liston. People thought he was crazy. Maybe it was a five to one, I don't remember. But he beat Liston, wasn't competitive at all in the fight. And Liston quit on his stool, I think after eight rounds. He then did the rematch, because back then they even had rematch clauses. And he beat Liston in the rematch again. And then went on to defend his title about, I think, nine more times or 10 more times. He beat guys like Floyd Patterson, who was older at the time, Cleveland Williams, with a gunshot wound. But still, he was outclassing him. Zora Foley, Ernie Terrell, Carl Mittenberger, dominating that era of boxing. He then, in 1967, had to step away from the sport. Everyone knows his you know, stance on the draft. And they uh, revoked his boxing license from 1967 to 1970. During this time, Joe Frazier wins a tournament, which makes himself the heavyweight champion of the world. So now you have a debate. Who's the great? Who's the best heavyweight at the time? Is it Joe Frazier? Is it Muhammad Ali? Because Ali didn't lose in the ring ever. But Joe Frazier, he was the new champion. And Ali had him fought in three years. Now, during this time, I remember seeing a video uh, looking back at this time. Obviously, I wasn't alive in 1967 or 1966. And Rocky Marciano, he was talking about Muhammad Ali, the great Rocky Marciano. He had a boxing show where he would talk about boxing like an analyst. And he said... Cassius Clay, because that's what they called him at the time. He's got a great speed. But what happens when he gets hit? Can he take the shot? That's what people are asking, because he got dropped by Cooper. He got dropped by Banks. Can he withstand the punishment? He comes back into boxing in 1970, fights Oscar Bonoeva and Jerry Quarry. Quarry first, then Bonoeva. Two of the top five contenders at the time. A lot of people now don't know those names, but at the time, they were in the top five, and he beats them both. And versus Bonoeva, he has a tough fight. He gets hurt in the last round, and Bonoeva was the guy who gave Frazier a tough time. He knocked Frazier down twice in one round from Argentina. He then fights Joe Frazier in the fight of the century. Uh, that's probably the biggest fight in boxing history from a historical significance standpoint. When you think of the fact that you had two undefeated heavyweights going at it and there was a real debate over who was the heavyweight champion of the world and Ali was winning the early rounds but then Frazier started breaking him down and Frazier beat Ali he dropped him in the 15th round won the fight legitimate win and that's probably the greatest victory in the history of heavyweight boxing a lot of people will say that Ali would have won that fight if that fight was the 1967 Ali or the 1966 Ali or the 1965 Ali versus that Joe Frazier. We'll never know. That's hypothetical. But the point is he got in there in 1971 and Joe Frazier won the fight. Me, I think a prime Ali would have probably beaten a prime Joe Frazier. But we'll never know. That's not how it played out. Joe Frazier then goes on to fight George Foreman. Foreman knocks Frazier out two rounds. In two rounds, he knocks him out, knocks him down six times, gets his head. You know, one of those punches that he hit him with, you know, Frazier was jumped out off the canvas six inches. It was like this guy, 
Foreman was a monster. During this time, Muhammad Ali, he fights Ken Norton. He loses the first time to Ken Norton because he doesn't take Ken Norton properly, seriously. And he comes in out of shape, heaviest day he's ever been. He then rematches Ken Norton, a very disputed fight. He gets the W. I thought it was a draw, but still, he did it. He comes back after that and fights the guy, George Foreman, who had knocked out Joe Frazier and knocked out Ken Norton in a round. Two guys that beat Ali. And people are saying Foreman's for sure going to beat him. Foreman's too much. He's too big. He's too strong. Ali's going to die in the ring. And what does Ali do? He dominates that fight. A lot of people know that fight is the rope dope and I think the misconception about that fight is that Ali was taking all this punishment and getting beat up. Ali was up on the cards, on all three judges' cards, and he was winning the fight. And he outboxed Foreman, and then later in the fight, dropped him and stopped him in a fight that most people didn't think he was going to win, a fight that he wasn't supposed to win. And he did it. He beat him. And you got to give him that. That's one of the greatest victories in the history of heavyweight boxing. And Ali then had another very long run where he beat guys like Ernie Shavers, Joe Frazier the third time, because he had fought Frazier the second time while he wasn't champion and beat him. Third time in the Thrill of Manila was an epic fight. Ken Norton the last time, even though they robbed him. But he beat guys like Ron Lyle, Chuck Wepner, so on and so on. This guy had two long runs in and the second run when he was older was in arguably the best era of heavyweight boxing, and he still came out on top. Second most championship wins ever. Maybe it's the most ever behind Joe Lewis. I mean, this dude, his hand speed was crazy. His foot speed for a man that size was crazy. Great chin, underrated physical strength. Uh, ring IQ was nuts. His gear that he could get into was crazy. And if you rate relative to the times, I think Muhammad Ali is the greatest heavyweight of all time from a uh, resume and accomplishment standpoint and from a performance standpoint in his prime you know he was unreal nobody was touching him back then from 1967 to 19 i mean from 1964 to 1967 and still even as a diminished fighter as an older fighter still came out on top in the era where you had george foreman joe frazier and um ken norton you know it's it's and you had a lot of other like good heavyweights like i said ron lyle uh jimmy young guys like jerry quarry uh jimmy ellis yeah he 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 he, he fought a lot of very good fighters and uh, his resume is staggering and eventually he uh got old and a lot of people may look at those later fights like with larry holmes and with um Trevor Burbick, but I don't really even care about those. I don't even count those. But Ali, from a resume standpoint, stands at the top of the heavyweight division. From an accomplishment standpoint, can't touch him. And his dominance in his prime was tremendous. The guy held it down. And that's why many people, including myself, consider him the greatest heavyweight of all time. Ali is the greatest. Let me know what you guys think. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Peace.